What's up YouTube, we're back again with a new video. My name is Danny James. On this channel, I make content around music video editing, dope transitions and styles that can improve your workflow. In this video, I'll be sharing some of my favorite trailing clone effects I've seen and used. I think they're really cool if you can pull them off well. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, give this video a like, and without further ado, let's get right into it. I found inspiration to make this video from this video by Loski. The editor really used this clone trailing masks very well just look at this point the car comes on just look at it very well the car sort of flies away and it clones inward and then outside and then later on you can see how he uses the artists like right here and he's been using them very well in this video okay for the first one that we shall be doing we're going to be trying to do that car which zooms in and out and some things fly away let's try something simple for now let's try cloning the car and having it push inwards and then outwards let's do that first i'll get i have this video already so we are not going to be taking a freeze frame instead we want to track this car uh, through these frames i'll go for my roto brush tool double click on your cursing and then just draw a simple brush around the car to tell the software the areas that you want it seems to be getting a good portion Make sure to get your first frame right. If you get the first frame right, After Effects will automatically do the rest for you if you're just able to get this first frame well. Also make sure that the video or the clip that you're trying to do this has good contrast. If you look at this, you can differentiate the car from the background easily, even with your eyes. So the same will apply for the software. If there is not much contrast, it will be very difficult for you to get a selection of the car. So I'm just telling the software the areas I want. I'm zooming in and out using my mouse scroll wheel. So this seems to be pretty decent. Remember to come here afterwards and extend this time. But you can only do that with a selection tool. Come here and then select multiple frames because you'll need to freeze this over the amount of time going forward. And then I'll hit freeze. You can see it's analyzing the frames going forward. It seems to be doing a good job. Yeah, it has done a really good job. If we go back to our composition now, remember we were in our layer and then we go back to our composition and you can see it has been very well tracked. Some things are not perfect, but you can work with it as it is for the sake of the tutorial. I'll bump up the feather a little bit. If you're not satisfied with the selection, you can unfreeze first and then come back with a roto brush. And then on the first frame, try to be more specific. Now I can see I left this space right here. I also left this space. So try to make the first selection very clean. But again, try to use the composition at a full so that you can see all the details very well. So I'll have to redo this again. This seems to be a better selection to start off. Let me zoom in and out. Okay. Now, you will remember we did this already. So it's just a matter of freezing it back again. Now, after this step, after getting the roto brush, you just need to duplicate this layer, control D. Now you have two layers of the same thing. And then on the layer, which is right below, we need to delete the roto brush from the effects. And when I delete it, you can see we have a layer which we can see everything. And if I disable it at the top, we have the layer which has the which has been selected. Now it's very easy from this point onwards. It's a matter of just playing with scaling. No keyframes, just scaling. So at this point, I want to scale this video down, but then you can see it is scaling wrongly. How you can adjust that? Just let me hit Control Z. You see this anchor point, get this anchor point tool, put it near the center of where you want everything to scale by. I'll scale it down like at 87 and then I'll push it, go back to your selection tool, make sure to always work with your selection tool. I'll push it about two frames. You can use page down and page up to move one frame. It goes up to there. It starts from here and then after one frame, it goes to the first selection. You can see I've also changed the labeling on it. And then after one more frame, I'll collapse these layers. I'll duplicate this layer once again, the one which has a selection of the car only. 
hit S on my keyboard, I'll scale it down even more. So now you can see we have three layers. And then I'll make sure that appears one frame after this one. If I collapse everything now, you can see what's happening. And then you can make more trails like that. I'll hit Ctrl D again, push it one frame, scale down even more. And now if you try to scroll back, it goes like this. You can see it's pretty much simple to work with. Right from here, I'll let this stay for two frames, the uppermost. I'll go one, two, and then I'll cut it. And then I'll go again one frame, cut this other one. So we are going back the stairs, one frame, the other one. Okay, sorry. Just cut it, trim it, don't push it back. So it goes from this and then back. And you can see it looks very dope. And now on this other one, I want to show you the second cloning. I want us to clone this artist through this transition. Okay, we have one scene where the artists are in a car and I have another scene which is in broad daylight. And then at the beginning of this frame of this next video, Control D to duplicate and the layer below, right click, go to time and then freeze that frame. And then you can push it inward like a few frames into this other video and then you can cut the rest like that so it goes from this video into a freeze frame but then again on this freeze frame we want to get a selection of this artist only i'll remove this area i'm holding alt while selecting to tell the software the areas i don't want and for the areas that i want i'm just clicking and dragging as for the hair i won't really concern myself much so as it is i'll go back to my selection tool and then I'll extend the time here, right here, and then I'll freeze it. Now, let me collapse everything. I just pressed you, go back to our composition. And now you can see we have a selection of the artists on top of these guys. All there is to do now is to just add keyframes for position. I'll hit P and then add a keyframe for position. I'll push it a few frames ahead and then I can push this down. You can also use your mouse to manually do it because it will just happen like this. It will come up like this and then the video will go on. And now we have we want to have some trails of him following him. I'll duplicate this selection of the artist. Let me relabel this so that you can see it clearly. Let me give it a red. I label all my layers just to make sure I have a neat timeline and I can always know what I'm working with. And right at this point, I'll control D to duplicate this one one two i'll go two frames this means that this clip right here it has the same keyframes as the ones which we just placed it will only come a bit later it will come a bit later you can see he's still coming up so you can adjust that maybe it can be one frame after this one let me just go one frame and then i'll push it and then i can make another duplication and then push it one frame later on here and then you can cut the excess to your right so that it matches with, the, with this clip which is about to enter. So it goes from this to this. That's basically it. It's just offsetting the timing of those keyframes and you are done. The only things I'd add you to add, I'll go to my effects and look for a fast blur. I'll take this radial CC radial fast blur and drop it on the first one. You can see it gives it that blurry look as it enters. Let me disable it. You can see they look so rigid. So add this to give a motion blur kind of sense. The other alternative will be adding motion blur, enabling it here. But when I did it, I found it to be a little bit extreme. I want to be able to tweak it. And that is why when I bring in the radial fast blur, I can adjust how strong I want it to be. At zero, it looks like this. If I add even five, you can see the difference. I'll leave it at nine. I'll copy this effect onto the other clips. Now they will enter with that blah. Yeah, and you can see it looks really good. And then there was this other cloning which was being done, which you will see the selection of the artist being thrown to the left and right. What you're going to do to this one, we are going to do the same thing we've been doing we'll get our roto brush tool once again, double click, go to our layers panel, highlight the areas which you want.
yeah now i'm done uh tracking this manually now i'll hit freeze back again and then it will track all those movements you can see it doesn't go away and again i also noticed it did a very good job with the hair if we go back to our composition it's not perfect but it can do the job just bump up the feather like that and then i'll duplicate this hitting ctrl d i'll delete roto brush from the layer beneath and as of this point i'll start throwing around those clones of these artists so we can start by adding a keyframe i'll add a position keyframe i'll hit p you can also add rotation if you need to i'll enable all of them and then once you've added the position and rotation go a few frames later on go back to a selection tool and then you can offset this clone you can throw it away you can have it come somewhere here and then another few frames ahead you can rotate it while displacing it away so it will go like this you can see and you can do that with more duplicates of this. I'll hit Ctrl D twice. Now I have two duplicates of the same thing. I'll hit P, hold Shift while hitting R. And on these other duplicates, I'll do the same thing. I'll go to my position keyframe, hold Shift and hit R. I'll see my rotation keyframes. You can delete the, the ones which appear later on. And after the first one, you can now displace this other one, whichever direction you wish to. You can displace it here. And I'll also set it to rotate a few bits. And I'll do the same for this other one. I can hit you to see all the keyframes that are there. I'll delete this and then I'll drag this. I'll put it right here and then I'll go one, two frames later and then I'll, I'll send it upwards. We sort of throw everything else away. And then to make it even feel a bit more real add motion blur you can add the radial fast blur but in this case i want to add the motion blur for these three clones you can see they become a little bit blurry and if you don't like the level of blurriness you can change that by changing your composition settings right under advanced the shutter angle determines how much blur i'll put it on 90 it's slightly lesser than when it was at 180 so you can see this is how you can do those clones that's basically it i hope you've enjoyed this video as much as i did showing you you can also tag me on instagram in case you do something more or less the same so that i can see what you've been able to learn from this video my name is danny james hope to see you in the next one give this video a like subscribe cheers